birthday. Uh, so when I retired full time in 2004, being still a young guy, I uh, wanted to continue working. So we started a, another business with our family, uh, which is another real estate investment trust uh, called Broadstone Real Estate, uh, where we now have 100 million of assets and 250 investors. And uh, we buy net lease property uh, around the country. And we now have 20, uh, we have uh, 46, I think, uh, properties in 16 states. Um, we open it up for new investors every quarter, and we had 28 new investors at, at the end of September. Uh, you know, we believe this is right now the best sector of real estate to be in. And uh, so I, I won't go on with that unless you have questions. Um, we're, uh, we think that business will be doubling in, uh, in, uh, on an annual basis going forward. It started out so successfully. but. I'd like to conclude now by just uh, uh, tell you that the best way to run a business is to follow Paul's, St. Paul's definition of love. It, it, you can do, run a business with far less stress, far more fun, and be blessed, I believe, with good financial results at the same time. And just listen to these words and try to relate them to how to run a business. It's not only apply though to, to uh, running a business, but the way if your first job uh, and during your career, I think to follow these guys and follow the servant leadership uh, principle, principles is a tremendous way to really move ahead in an organization. Maybe not all organizations, but most. It'll blow people away. You'll be, you'll stand out. Uh, and just listen to these words. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not envy. It is not boast. It is not proud. Now, don't you like to be around people that you know act that way? Uh, and wouldn't you want to have somebody like that be your boss? It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not eagerly. Uh, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. That's really a way to live, obviously, and to run a business and so on. So now, do you have, do you have any questions? Well, I, okay. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess talking about um, delayed gratification. Right. Um, trying to give us some advice on that, but what would be your... I don't know, what, what would be the thing that you think we should really focus on, and it, specifically in regards to that, as we, you know, we're all looking to kind of start our careers? Yeah, I mean, I think it's so tempting today to start your career and get a job and go to the car dealer and say it's $249 a month and uh, you can have this brand new car and so on. And then, um, you know, it's so easy to buy a new suit, put it on a credit card, go out to dinner. It, it really, it, you can get away with it. But if you want to uh, take the stress out of your life, stay away from debt. If you go into business, obviously, or if you buy a new ho home, you've got to have debt. But, and, and maybe uh, when my wife and I were married, uh, we between my junior and senior year of college, I had a Nash old beat-up Nash Rambler that I used for selling fuller brushes on the side while I was going to college, if you can believe that. Went on a honeymoon, twisted our drive shaft, brought it back, moved it back to the car dealer, he fixed it and said, uh, the bill's $500. Well, no way did I have $500. And so I did the American thing. I traded that, I, I traded the junker that I had in for a brand new car for $149 a month, you know. <laughs> But I never did it again, uh, and I learned a lesson because uh, I was paying on that car for a lot of years. But I, and I, I know it's so tempting, and I have grandchildren that your ages that, that ju just have gotten so tempted with the credit cards. It's it's, it's terrible. I mean, uh, uh, you guys are all probably get an application a week, don't you, for, to, to take on a credit card? Well, those are dangerous things. Uh, um, because what it does is it just keeps you um, tied up and uh, uh, 
you know, if you get a, you, you may have to take a job that you don't like as a result just to pay your bills and you can't afford to quit because you can't miss a week's pay and other ways you won't. I mean, if you get trapped with all those things, it's just not, not great. Is that, that's more of an answer, more of an answer than you wanted. I think there's a question over yeah. yeah, I We were talking earlier about how the recession is pushing and pulling on your vacancy rates, I guess we would say, and uh, per perhaps you can tell the students a little bit about that, how, how the business goes over the stages of the business cycle. Well, it's inter well, let me just quick, quickly tell you about Broadstone Net Lease, where we are, <coughs> we, we, buy, we only buy properties where we have what we call two and a half coverage, where the profit of the site that we're looking at, the specific piece of real estate, is earning two and a half times the rent. So with that kind of thing, we're pretty well protected. So we don't have any delinquency in rent. In the apartment business, uh, definitely go through cycles. In, um, and the apartment business is really tied to, tied to job growth. And when you have negative job growth, like we've had recently, that's a bad thing, and no question. But the first apartment owners to get affected are the ones with the fancy best apartments, the most expensive. Apartments we have are what we call B's, not A's. A's are the, um, so ours are average rent, I don't know what it is now, but it's probably like $1,200 for a B, well, an A is 16 or 1800 something like that. So what people do in times like this, they move down from the A's to the B's, or, and they also move from the B's back home when they lose their job or whatever. But nevertheless, we've been able to uh, maintain 95% occupancy. And the interesting thing over the cycles, when times are really great, the A's do better. And when times are doing poorly. Avalon Bay, for example, in our industry is the top, you know, top A producer. We talked about Smith, uh, Smith companies in Avalon Bay and others that have A type apartments. Well, they suffer the most uh, in times like this, but do the best in good times. We just kind of constantly do okay. And uh, so that wasn't necessarily by design. That's just kind of where we ended up. Uh, so it, it, the cycles are real. I mean, that's, these are devastating times for uh, a lot of real estate. And, uh, but fortunately, it, it, uh, the real estate companies that are suffering the most right now are hotels, for example, you, you can imagine. Uh, and um, also uh, industry, industrial buildings are very hard to rent. If you've got an em empty warehouse, it's possible to rent it today. Retail stores um, um, are, and shopping centers are, are having a difficult time. Offices are being um, vacated. Down, people, the companies are downsizing, and so the rents, rents are going down and the vacancies are going up. So those kinds, real estate is affected by cycles. Sure. Let me, let me tell you about a, a story about servant leadership. In 1995 or so, we got this money from Wall Street. We decided we wanted to uh, venture out, and uh, we went, studied the markets. We went to Long Island, and it uh, looked like just a great place to go. And so we identified a, a property of four or 500, 450 units. I think it was pretty substantial property out, out in the middle of Suffolk, Suffolk, Suffolk County, 